It's the last week of How to Dance in Ohio on Broadway before opening. This is Broadway. Apparently there's a rehearsal happening right now that I did not know about. My brain is spinning. I don't know, I may end up needing to edit this up. Oh hi friends, happy rainy Sunday. It's the last week of How to Dance in Ohio on Broadway before opening. I'm currently unsure if I'm working the red carpet for And That's Showbiz, a nice big job offer tomorrow that I don't know whether or not I want to take, but it's very nice. So it's a crazy time, <laughs> but I got to bring you along, you know? I forgot the part where I introduced myself. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Katherine Quinn. I talk about Broadway, lifestyle and financial freedom, currently working on Broadway, how to dance in Ohio. I also worked on Gatsby at Paper Mill Playhouse, soon to be headed who knows where. Uh, we're into December, the weather is frightful. Let's go do some line notes and script calling and enjoy my last week as anyone's assistant ever. <sighs> Even though Rebecca is so nice. I'm so ready to be into the next phase of my life. It's gonna be beautiful. All right, let's go. Apparently there's a rehearsal happening right now that I did not know about and script changes are needed and I'm in charge of the primary master script, whatever you wanna call it. And of course it's Sunday, so the trains are running really slowly. So I gotta figure out how to like make this all happen on the train. One week. We got this. That was just generally some assistant chaos that occurred. I didn't know there was a rehearsal. There was a rehearsal. There were lines changed. They needed me with my computer doing the thing. The rehearsal was not on the call sheet. Anyway, everything's fine. Show went great. My notes went great. And I won't be an assistant away from today. So you know, Broadway and gratitude. But also, onward. Let's get through Times Square and get home. Okay, the best part about filming these in advance, I've got, hi, you there. You wanna come talk to my friends with me? The bad news is that you're not seeing things the second they're happening to me. Good news is I get to spill more tea this way because the odds of it being more public information by the time this is out, are pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you what's happening this week. And then in the editing process, if I have to bleep anything out or remove anything, I will. Can you wanna come closer? Come to mama, come here. These negotiations are not going well. Does anything smell better than your dog's head? This is a rhetorical question, obviously. Nothing smells better than your dog's head. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about theater, but also just so in love with my dog. We're about to celebrate our five years of living together. Oh yeah got you from the airport almost five years ago by the time you're watching this it will have already been five years and I just wish dogs lived forever I think about him not being a part of my life every day which makes me love him and miss him even more in advance does anyone else do this he's my favorite soul on the planet okay let's talk about theater so getting fancy social media Broadway marketing job offer tomorrow love that should find out if gatsby has a theater this week or next probably next and i don't know what that means because strategically it's like the broadway theater is an 1800 seat theater the broadway theater not just like a theater on broadway it's very very hard to sell no show has made it two years in a decade 10 years ago cinderella ran for two years and that was the longest we've had in a hot minute the second longest run was a year and then behind that 10 months like nothing can hold the broadway theater nothing so it's a daunting lift for or Gatsby or whatever. In some senses, I do think that Gatsby is a logical fit for it, but it's a little terrifying. And they also got to restore that bad boy from Here Lies Love. At any rate, it will be filled in the spring. It's just a TBD with whom. And then if it's not us, us, us being Gatsby, I mean, at the risk of being an asshole, at the time of filming this, Harmony is not performing while the Barrymore may open up. Vultures, vultures, the lot of us. It is not a system that uh, benefits longevity of shows you know so we're waiting to find out about that and then i may also be involved with another broadway musical in the spring another sort of choose your own adventure job within the world of this show which is really exciting to me because i think it might align really beautifully with i'm not going to say the name of the show just yet although by the time i see that maybe nah 
I'm just gonna try a bunch of crazy ass within that showbiz next year. I think this is gonna align really nicely with some of that crazy shit. I'm really excited. It's gonna be exhausting. Like what, why am I starting a startup on Broadway? I feel like there were a couple other things I wanted to, oh, 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 oh. I am coming to you live, not live. The moment I'm filming this part of this video, we're about to open Ohio. Sales have been abysmal, like $250,000 last week, which is rough, especially for a musical. I think that Marathon, who's doing our organic digital, is doing a fantastic job. The account manager is a friend of mine. I think she's doing truly exceptional work. And I think it's hard because it's not based on really well-known IP. We don't have giant stars. It's not music that people know. I mean, it's just like a heavy lift in 2023 and heavy lift to like get the word out and get brand recognition. Like we struggled with Shucked and I feel like Ohio is a much harder sell than Shucked is. The thing that I think is going to be interesting is because we open a week from today, between this and Spamalot, it's going to be the most incredible case study for whether reviews matter. If Ohio doesn't get raves, I think Ohio might be screwed. Although the audiences seem to be really, really warm with it. And it's a very, very sweet, very earnest show. And maybe that word of mouth will also start to generate. And like even the evil jaded queens on message boards are like warming to it. So like what's going to be so interesting is if we get raves, I don't know how it's going to be received. I think that... It's a sweet earnest show. It's representation that needs to happen. I love the score. The actors are exceptional. I think that critics who are typically incredibly cynical could potentially be slightly less show, less so with this show because they underestimate autistic people. And I am autistic. Obviously autistic people in the audience and younger people like get it. But I do think that there's a certain age group that is not particularly well educated on what being autistic is and a contemporary understanding of it. And I kind of get the sense that some audience members have a bit of a vibe. I don't know, I may end up needing to edit this out, but I get a little bit of a vibe of like, look at those autistic kids go, which is kind of misplaced. I oh thought it was, Rebecca said something, she was like, do they know that we're just a bunch of like, I don't know what she said, it was something funny. It was like roustabouts and scallywags and stoners. Like we're just fucking people. Like we're just fucking adults. But I could see that maybe in a shitty way going in our favor in terms of people who rhyme with Schmessy Shreen who like are very cynical about theater being kinder to it. But I could be wrong. I could be super wrong. That's the only circumstance in which I could see him being super kind about it, I think, but I could be wrong. I also could be wrong. Spam a lot was kind of in the shitter and the marketing was super boring and it was like, why are we doing this? And then it got raves and now it's selling like $2 million a week. Now we're not a spam a lot and that's just not gonna be our journey. But I am curious if the tide can turn super significantly if we get great, great reviews. Because like on Shucked, we got mixed positive reviews and the New York Times, Shmrassi Shreen, was very like, le poo poo funny bits, like just joyless. And, and we needed that. There is clearly still some merit to a New York Times review. If you ever want a good theater critic that I actually enjoy reading, who like is dramaturgically sound, tends to give shows a fair shot, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Sarah Holdren is my queen. Anyway, it's gonna be interesting to see how Ohio is reviewed and if it turns the tide for us. And then we're also competing against probably 14 other original new musicals in this season, which is crazy. Of which I may be a part of two others, lols. And it's kind of anybody's guess. Like if I had to predict right now as of December 3rd, 2023, Hell's Kitchen Best Musical, maybe? The book needs work. They know, they've gotta know, they've gotta know. But it's a good spectacle and it's a good commercial sell. Maybe The Notebook, I, I, it was not for me, but like maybe it will be. I'm so curious. Anyway, I just really wanted to chat some theater tea. I'm gonna cuddle my dog and like chill the f out. It's gonna be great. Happy Monday. Look at this feast, um, TMI, but I'm cramping. And so I'm gonna eat whatever I want, which at this moment appears to be a Trader Joe's salad and Mexican food. <laughs> Look at what his lash is doing. Oh, so beauteous, it's so curly. Okay, I literally was coming in here. It's a weird day. It's a great day. It's Monday, it's my day off. <laughs> my car is getting detailed a thrill before January, which is like my sunny, sunny, warm Orlando time. I was coming in here to succumb to the cozy of cramping 
And I was like, okay, this is okay because there's an archival of an upcoming Broadway show that someone is interested in my working on. And I need to see the show in a previous iteration and like get some vibes and see how I feel. So I was like, this is fantastic. I'm gonna put it on my computer. I'm gonna cast it to my TV and I'm just gonna sit here and watch this musical, which I was really excited about and still might do. Lowell's, I then received an email that was like, hey, do you wanna like interview for this associate director position on another pre-Broadway, pre-something, who knows what it'll be, show for it's out of town. It's a show that has had iterations in another country and has not had an iteration here. It's a really legit venue and would be an exciting journey. Now, associate director is and isn't exciting to me. I'm so curious who's directing, so I need to find out. So far, it seems like the show is really interesting to me and one of my favorite theater creators has made content about previous iterations of this show and I'm so grateful to them. I don't know, it's just someone whose opinion I trust. Oh, are you feeling playful? Mom is having like a little bit of a, um, a career moment. So can she tell her friends about her career and then, then can we play? Anyway, um, this just goes to say the dates are February to April, which are also the dates that, I don't know, maybe Gatsby, maybe this other Broadway show that I'm potentially working on, but this associate directing gig would not be in New York City. And I'm like, can, can I associate direct a show, creatively direct Gatsby, whatever on this other Broadway show? Like, how much of this can I do simultaneously? How much of this do I want to do simultaneously? And here's the thing, Gatsby might not get its theater. I may not end up being contracted for this other Broadway show. And even if I interview for this out of town, I may not get it. So none of them are sure things. So right now we're just going to go full steam ahead with all three, but like, Things have escalated quickly. All right, I'm gonna um, keep eating all this food. I'm gonna find out who's directing this show and I'm gonna finish my first little mini search on this out of town and then I'm gonna watch the Broadway show. Whose birthday is it? Mine. <laughs> Everyone say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Tia! Oh gosh. <laughs> this is Broadway. <laughs> Associate director, of Broadway. Friends! Hi from me, the Empire State Building. Well, just the tip anyway. Hey, friends. We're gonna freeze a Broadway show today. Look at all these wrinkles I've accumulated this year. The age. <sighs> Get some under eye filler. Take care of that. Okay, if you don't know, freezing a show happens just before press performances. Okay, look, here's the way it works. How to Dance in Ohio, here she is. She opens on Sunday. Today, the day that I am recording this is Tuesday, and today is the day we freeze the show. Starting tomorrow matinee, critics start coming to the show, press previews. They come from Wednesday to Saturday, open the show Sunday night, and that's how all of those reviews can be printed. For Shucked, those reviews came out before the show was even over. Like some of them, like New York Times review was out before the show had even finished. So we were like reading Schmessy Schmarine's thoughts on our way to the after party. Again, I'm an advocate for like a red carpet opening that's like, yay for the cast. And then a press opening. So you don't have to like feel shitty at the party because everybody has different feelings about whether or not they're going to read reviews. I am in marketing not on this show, but in general. And so I'm never not gonna read the reviews because I am always fascinated by how much that does or does not impact the sale of a show. So anyway, freezing makes my life so much easier on Ohio. It means my real job is complete. I also still don't know if I'm working the opening night red carpet. I am nervous about being very cold. I'm also not gonna lie, I'm nervous about being an autistic person asking autistic people questions on a carpet so because I feel like it's just gonna be a mask of palooza, you know what I'm saying? Alright, I'm gonna go in the theater. Got my hot beverage. It's gonna be great. Happy to be here, ready to work. Oh my god, I'm so glad we're frozen. No more script changes. Ooh, we just have five more days of being an assistant on Broadway. And then onward. Grateful. And grateful to move on. Good morning.
morning. It's 1 p.m. But I'm in a place where that's morning. It's already been a day. I did a voiceover session this morning that, oh, just not my favorite client, but we love to make money, you know? So it's okay. And I'm gonna go get lunch with a dear friend, but I'm hoping, you know, we'll have some lovely fellowship time, but I'm also selfishly helpful. They'll help me sort of unscramble my brain. I just I feel very overwhelmed by these three potential things in the spring and where I want my business to go next year. And I don't know, I just feel tired, overextended and overwhelmed. But look, my son. Oh my God, she's late. So maybe I'll just hang here for a second. I'm very ready for Orlando if I haven't already mentioned it. I'm a millennial snowbird. This is my third year of going down to Orlando for a couple weeks in January, negotiating a good deal on a cheap Airbnb and just like regulating and being in space with my dog. Yeah, I've gotta, I've gotta get back to me, you know? Y'all know this feeling? Do y'all have any tricks when you feel like you've lost like your, yourself as a human a little? Meditation, working out. I'm open to all suggestions. I'm feeling much less hungover and gross and I wasn't, I am sober. Um, I'm California sober, but I just felt dehydrated and headachy and gross this morning. And I feel a lot better now because I drank lots of liquids and just helped clarify some things. And the weather is so gross, it's so frightful, but oh, he just makes everything better. I'm gonna prep for this interview tomorrow. Gonna be good. What a big week. Hi team. This may be a truly dreadful angle, so I apologize. Good morning. I have my interview for that associate gig today. I'm feeling nervous. And I wish that I wouldn't. Because I'm excited to meet these people and I have other opportunities if this doesn't happen. And also, if it doesn't happen, it's okay. So I don't know why I'm just being such a human. <laughs> and feeling nervous about it. Okay, let's think about what I used to do when I auditioned, what tricks I would use. Okay, happy to be here and ready to work. I, I will, that's a good one. <clears throat> Someone should put that on a mug, buy my merch. Happy to be here and ready to work. Cause I will be happy to be there. And I, that's like, I don't know, here's the thing. I'm meeting with the producers. I don't even know if the director that I had assist will be there cause she's British. So, but I'm excited to meet this producing team. I'm going to see an out-of-town on one of their shows in a couple weeks. I may be working on another one of their shows in the spring in a different capacity. So I, I'm excited to meet these people and I need to just get over this zit and moisturize my face before Ohio opening because I am doing red carpet. I can't remember if I told y'all, <sighs> which also makes me a little nervous. I need a treadmill in my house for the anxiety. Unfortunately, I live on the third floor of a co-op, so that's not my journey. I also just know that I'm going up against some of my friends for this, which eat like, again, I'm gonna be so fine if I don't get this job. This is not like make or break. This is not like, this is like, and also like, I don't even know that I can do this job because other things may happen. And I'm gonna have to get over the being against your friends thing because that's what I had to do on Audition World. And I did it in the SDC observership and I need to like make peace with the fact that it's gonna happen with directing choreographing stuff uh i just know i'm gonna run into my friends who may or may not know that i'm up for this and it just like makes me feel icky it makes me feel icky <sighs> i just have to run my own race i just have to run my own race that's what i have to do honestly it's like one of the most compelling reasons to own your own business because like well i say that and then i'm starting to become friends with all of the broadway marketing people and like i'm gonna be up against them for accounts too so like anyway uh let's let's go with the color that makes my eyes look fetching don't you think oh i do not like feeling this anxious okay well certainly no more caffeine at this juncture the nerves don't necessarily behoove me because sometimes i out autism myself like i definitely have done that on interviews i mean if you're an autistic human i'm sure you know i haven't interviewed for something in a hot minute like i think the literal last thing i interviewed for was ohio which was like six months ago all things for a reason that's true Everything I do or do not get, every single time, it always is the way it's meant to be. Even if the job is hell, it's leading to a good thing. That has never not been true, ever. We got this. First snow. I hate winter, but this is pretty. 
Now, this is just day one of snow. I will not feel this way in a few months or weeks even. The interview went well, I think. I don't know, I'm so autistic. <laughs> I just, you never know. And then we still don't know about Gatsby. Now we're hearing, we'll find out Monday or Tuesday about whether we get this theater. What a life, what a time. I'm gonna put my pitch together for the third project in the mix, the other Broadway show. There's something else I have to share with you, which is I don't have tickets to opening night of the show that I've been working on for the past two months. And if that doesn't tell you how f***ed Broadway is, I don't know what does. I RSVP'd a day late. I'm like, bitch, I've been busy working on your show. You just like didn't save enough seats for the number of people who were working on this? What? F***ing dead. So I will literally host the red carpet and then go home, maybe? I mean, at this point, I'm like, they were like, you can stand in the back. And I'm like, no. Also, what's my girlfriend supposed to do? No, no, we won't be standing in the back. XOXO Gossip Girl. I'll do the red carpet and then have an early night at home. Thank you so much and happy opening. Anyway, yay. Hi, friends. Hi. I got that big kahuna job offer. Well, at least a non-offensive job offer. No, it's a good job. It's a good job offer. I just don't think that I can... I gotta be boss, you know? And I would get to be boss. I'd be like head of a division, but... I don't know, friends. This is what you came to see, right? Catherine laying on a rug, thinking about next year. I need to do my pitch for that third show that I haven't done. You know what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing is I'm spiraling wanting that job that I interviewed for today, even though I like felt ambivalent about it. I know there's more interviews tomorrow, so I'm sure I would hear next week. <gasps> at the earliest, I guess. They were hard to read. They were warm. And then at the end, it was like, okay, goodbye. And I was like, mm. I mean, I don't know what I wanted to parade, a send off, but. Everything feels so vague. <laughs> I do not know how to proceed. And then someone in marketing was like, our business runs on flops. You have to take the flops. And I don't, I don't think this is a flop. It's just such a hard season. My brain is spinning. Hi, happy Friday. Oh, I sent off my pitch for that other Broadway show. Yoo-hoo. Stayed up, not too late. I got an aura ring to track my sleep, look. I'll, um, I'll let you know how it goes. I just know that 2024, it's like gonna be a better year of self-care for me. And that includes better sleep. And I wanna know like how restless I am and how much my dog snuggling with me is an issue. Too bad, gonna snuggle with him anyway. Um, yeah, anyway, excited. Okay, today, someone has asked me to be on their board of directors, which is so nice. I don't know that I have the capacity. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, it's a definitely a great initiative. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so here's what's happening. I've got that call, her inquiry about being on the board of directors for a new nonprofit. I need to clean out my fridge. I can't even show you. My sink isn't bad, so small wins. Nonprofit call, then voiceovers, then my only other like leave the house items. Um, Ohio's frozen, it's press nights. We're not supposed to go. So my other items are ugh, the dentist. Ugh to check in on the hot tooth I had a few weeks ago, which is fine now, and dinner with a pal. And then I think the rest of the day needs to be a Catherine Quinn slash Gatsby content day. Now, as you know, Gatsby if at all is precarious because we may or may not have a Broadway theater that I'm gonna find out about Monday or Tuesday. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and strategizing accordingly as I am being approached to like work on Broadway shows with marketing, audience building, fan forward content, etc. I'm starting to try to make like notes for myself about, I just find that once you're in something, you lose perspective. Do you know what I mean? Like once you're in the thing, it's like, like I feel like I have way more perspective than the humans who are in it every day. And that's only because I'm outside of the thing, but I'm about to be inside the thing. I'm about to be one of them. And so I just want to write down as many like external observations as possible before I enter the machine you know, which is another reason why I don't want to accept that full-time job because I, I mean, I want to work with them, but I don't want to be singularly in that orbit because I actually think that I will provide greater value 
working with, but not within. So I had like a doc of like sort of a scrambled brainstorm that I'll need to like flesh into a pretty thing of like community building, engagement, etc. Okay, fierce. Speaking of, Ohio is starting a ticketing initiative today that's pretty ballsy. 50,000 tickets for $50 to try to get 50,000 people to see the show before the end of the year because the word of mouth is really good, but our numbers are garbage and growing, but not enough to sustain the show currently, but it's also only week three and it's gonna be really interesting. We open Sunday. So this is definitely the moment of like, what are the reviews gonna say? But as we know, I don't have a ticket to opening night. So I guess I'm just like, <laughs> I truly cannot even. I missed the RSVP by one day. I have been working on this show. I have been assigned to this show for six months and I don't have a ticket for opening night. What the literal f Come the f on, Business 101, what the f It's crazy. I don't care that I'm an assistant. That's f nuts, y'all. That's nuts. That's nuts. Anyway, anyway, I guess on Sunday, I can be just like sitting at home waiting for those reviews. If we get trash reviews or sunk, if we get decent reviews, we're sunk. Although this ticketing initiative might be interesting because word of mouth is very positive. So it's just like, we sh like Broadway shows have to market before they're on Broadway. They have to market before they're on Broadway. They've got to do like big marketing pushes before they have to put big marketing dollars before Broadway. You have to factor that into your budgets. If you wait until a show is in rehearsals or previews, you have waited too late. You, there's also way too fucking much competition. Like once we're in this, once we're in winter, we're fucked. Like not, not we as in Ohio, there are 14 new original musicals on Broadway this spring. Okay. In addition to revivals like Sweeney Todd with Joe Locke and Merrily with Daniel Radcliffe. Like we already don't have the audiences to sustain that and all of these shows are gonna start marketing at the same time. Now it's really interesting, like right now I've got a like, like the notebook I've been hearing as I've been like bougially taking cars that I can't afford because it's cold and I'm late and I can work in the car in a way that I can't work on the train. So I'm hearing like audio buzz for that. I feel like I've heard an audio ad for The Outsiders. Boop is crushing it. It's RPM, they're killing the game with their out of town stuff, it's doing great. And producers and or whomever is being really smart about letting RPM get the assets they need. Honestly, also producers should be letting socials get all the assets they need all the time and should be prioritizing that because that beautiful show that you're building won't exist unless your social is killing it and or you have a star. Which speaking of, I'm really excited, like Jasmine Amy Rogers is the human playing Betty Boop and universally everything is like, this is a star making role, which I love. I love someone coming in fresh and just like taking over Broadway. Can't wait, can't wait. Anyway, I ranted. Thanks for joining me for this marketing meeting. Okay, I think that's enough for me. All this goes to say, we're gonna hop on this call. We're gonna do voiceovers. We're gonna do, <laughs> that's how we got here, Gatsby content. It's like what the strategy is different if we are going to Broadway in two seconds versus later. We're in a mood. We're in a mood. A good one. Happy to be here, ready to work, let's go. Okay, I had the call with uh, the nonprofit and oh my goodness, I just, I am now, I am now the get off my lawn grandma. I don't want this person to get off my lawn and I don't want this business, I want this, I want this business. It just feels, I am like now the person that's like, ah, oh, young dreamer, I want that for you. Like, oh God, I am the person that used to look at me and that like probably today is still looking at me being like, that's nice, nice dreams. Oh God. It's so tricky because you need, okay. You just like, you need that kind of chutzpah and you need that kind of blind dreamy ambition to get shit done and to establish change. But also this dream, I want to be reality, but like, damn. Like I remember when I don't know, this was pre-pandemic. I was meeting with a producer because I was like, maybe producing is a thing that I want to do. And she basically was just like, yeah, learn more about producing before you talk to me again. And I'm like, how am I supposed to learn how to do that? So like, 
in this call with this like exceptionally ambitious, like really well-intentioned, smart human, I, I offered some of the initial feedback that was just like, oh God, yeah, have you considered X, Y, Z? Instead of just being like, come back and talk to me when you know more about how to run a nonprofit, because how are you gonna, nobody's born just knowing how to run a nonprofit. You have to like, you know, they need to bump up against people like me and people meaner than me being like, but how, you know? Anyway. I, I'm now the old evil one, so here we are. All right, friends. Uh, let's let's do some voiceovers. Let's do some voiceovers. Time to get baby a birthday present. They're really excited about it. I already got them their romantic present, and now it's time for the utilitarian one. Shoes with traction that fit. Oh, baby, you've been and talking about Pokemon since literally the week I met you. It's time. It's time for baby to join. The Hoka cult. Okay, we ditched Hoka's because and now baby is running around in Fleet Feet at Columbus Circle, not sponsored. In funky color socks. I have green and gray socks. Love it. Love it. <laughs> but we did their proper sizing and now we're having the experience that I wanted them to have. It's the very shittiest time of the year. It's SantaCon Day. We fing hate SantaCon Day. Oh, Jesus. We've been hate scared once already today <laughs> on the A train, no less, coming from Uptown, which is strange. Mm. And I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt because I was like, maybe they thought we were staring and then they were just like mutually staring, but they were like, No, no, look, I get stared at all the time. I know. I mean, look at me on the upper, like up on Washington Heights, I get like double triple takes <laughs> and outright stares. You know, like it's, it feels different. It's, it's I hate it. Good. It's a horrible and feeling. And then on the other side, we got the very charming. Oh, I'll get that in a size women's. Oh my god. Yeah, we had a very cute attendant at uh, the Hoka store who was very nice to us and not afraid of the gays. Oh, and then he, he made a joke about it later that was not heat cranny. It was just scary. Yeah, but it made me nervous. Sweet yeah. and charming. I feel like I just got ignored when I looked really butch. I didn't feel like I got hate crime, but I just got like looked over. And now that I'm back to like femland, obviously I'm straight passing and I mean I say that and baby's like, you look super gay, but you're straight passing to the straight people. Yes, to the straight people I'm straight passing. That's all that matters. Um, all I can assume is that if they see us interacting, that they're just jealous. Because we're hot and we're in love. What else could it possibly be? Why else would they be so fucking intimidating? But what's at the root of that? They're fucking jealous. Friends, it is opening night eve. It is the night before opening night of How to Dance in Ohio on Broadway. We made it to the end of the week. Tomorrow is Sunday. It's supposed to rain. We're moving the red carpet indoors. Stay tuned as to whether or not I actually sit in a seat and watch the show. It's gonna be a crazy adventure. Thank you for sticking it through this bananas time. You know the, the wildness is going to continue. I'm hosting on the red carpet. I'm bringing you along. It's all gonna be in the next vlog. So stick around if you enjoyed this video. Engaging with the video is the best way that I can ensure that the algorithm knows what wonderful humans to push this video out to, people like yourself. So it's very, very much appreciated if you hit that little thumbs up button, leave a comment, click subscribe. As always, I invite you to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at It's Catherine Quinn. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Opening night. Okay, bye.